I, I am, first of all, I want to thank God. I want to thank you all for your prayers. Uh, I know that I wasn't confident last week that I would be here. I, I had this really weird story I'm going to share with you, fairly personal, but I was bitten by a spider in my eyebrow at night and uh, the condition mimicked a stroke. So I was in hospitals in Washington, D.C. Uh, for three or four days last week while they were trying to figure out what was going on. I had no idea, the doctors didn't know, so I called Acho and I said, I don't think I'm going to make it. And Acho began to pray. And if you know Acho, that was not an option. I am totally confident that because of her prayers and the collective prayers of the people in this room in this wonderful country uh, that I am here. So thank you again for, for supporting me and having me here. Before I get started, none of this would, would happen if it weren't for a few very important people. And if you all would just join me in recognizing Achal and the Sherm India team for all that they've done to put on such a wonderful opening event. Achal team, would you please stand if you're out there? Thank you all. So, personal anecdote this morning, I got up, well, I never went to sleep as a fact of the matter. It was quite a night. You all know the story, travel 36 hours, you arrive here, your body doesn't know what day it is. So I got up and walked around the campus last night here at the wonderful hotel. And thank you to the staff at the hotel. I um, walked around and it was, felt like 95 degrees at nighttime which is highly unusual, 95 Fahrenheit that is. Uh, being an American, I was born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, right next to Miami, so I'm used to the weather. And I walked around last night and I immediately felt at home. I love the weather, I love the people, I love the, their ability and willingness to help me feel comfortable wherever I went. Sir, may I help you? No, sir, yes, sir. It was just a really, I felt like, although this is my first time in India, that I've been here before. And so I wanna thank you all for making me feel comfortable and welcome. And I hope that we do the same to you, the Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM, over the next couple of days. We want to make sure that you feel like this profession globally embraces this country and indeed all of Asia. We are very, very excited to have you with us. So by background, I'm a lawyer. I began my career as a tax lawyer, a labor and employment lawyer. I was a litigator, which means I tried labor and employment lawyer law cases in the United States. Shortly thereafter, I went into human resources. I had the opportunity because of a promotion to leave the law department and be on the front side of the people problems as opposed to the back side. Too often the lawyers were called in once the problems had occurred. And I was given the wonderful opportunity to be a vice president of human resources. For a company you may or may not have heard of, it's, it's uh, no longer existent in its traditional form. It's called Blockbuster Entertainment. I don't know if you know the video chain. Big American concept and I was the vice president of HR. Very, very wonderful experience, but then had the opportunity to evolve into different roles. I moved to the UK, where I, I served as the general counsel for a global behemoth, uh, 418,000 employees around the globe, the Compass Group, served as their chief legal counsel as well as their HR support, and then came back to the United States to run a technology company. Yes, of all things, a lawyer, an HR person, and indeed a technologist, which is what really makes this such a special opportunity, Acho. Thank you again. Sherm, HR, and technology. It is a perfect marriage of all of my experiences. And God blessed me just recently to be given the opportunity to lead this wonderful organization, the Society for Human Resource Management. You have some 300,000 members across the globe, all Sherm strong. 165 foreign countries. That's who we are. We not only represent the profession, but we serve the professional. That's what SHRM is about, and I hope over the next couple of days you get that from us. Since my earliest days on the SHRM Board of Directors, and I was, believe it or not, I'm gonna date myself a little bit, but I was on the SHRM Board of Directors when I was in 1994. I was actually a pup, a baby. And I had the opportunity to see the transformation of our profession. I remember so vividly 
us worrying about what do you do when you open an application in a newspaper? You print an advertisement for, an, for a job opening. You receive thousands of applications. How do you sort them? How do you determine who meets the criteria that you need to do your job? How do you, how do you pay them? What's the right level of compensation depending upon what part of the world and indeed the world they live in? There were so many parts of the work that we did which was manual and we all longed for the day when technology, when companies like Indeed would come around and help us. Thank you Indeed, by the way, for supporting this wonderful event. But when they could come around and use technology to enable HR or what was then more personnel so that we could be more effective more strategic in our work. Fast forward, we're here, 2018. We figured out in large part the concept of technology, at least the idea of automation. That is how we can be more efficient, more productive. We're getting there, we've almost nailed that. But we're now moving into another era, another era, one that started sort of in the agricultural hunting and gathering where we look for efficiency and productivity. And we've now evolved past the technology era into what I refer to and Kowalski refers to as the augmented era. An era where we focus less on strength and speed and more on agility, creativity, adaptability, where talent is a very different concept than any of us can even imagine where indeed it's more than just a tagline, more than just, you know, you hear companies say all the time, the companies that get the right employees will succeed. Human resources are our most important asset. Well, the fact of the matter is, I think in years past, those were just words. I think we wanted to believe that, we kind of believed it, we thought it was the right thing to believe, but now we know it. The only organizations that win going forward will be the organizations who understand human talent, who understand capital, human capital. And that's the work that we're in. I hope and trust that that's the work that all of you all are here to be engaged in because that's why Sherm India is, has, has presented this conference. We are convinced that this is the differentiator. This talent game is what HR must play a role in helping our countries and indeed the world succeed in. So, Sherm, what is Sherm so focused on this about? You know, when I joined our board nearly 20 years ago, uh, there was a big discussion around representing the profession. Increasingly, I have asked our colleagues on the board of directors at Sherm for us to focus more on being responsible for all things work, all things relevant to the workplace, not just limiting ourselves to the profession. Now, by the way, that no part of that is to suggest that we are abandoning our commitment to the human resources profession and to the human resources professional. What I'm submitting to you is that the work is important we, the people who do the work, is important, but business, organizations cannot survive without us and therefore we need to take on a larger remit. I would submit to you that that remit has to be a remit about the workplace writ large. That's the work that we're going to do. And we have to ask ourselves, how can technology change? How is technology changing the nature of global work? This is not a United States discussion. This is not a China discussion. This is not an India discussion. This is a global conversation that we must all engage in if we are going to be competitive in this global marketplace. Flexible and transient global workforces the idea that we can only rely upon the talent in our country at any particular time to serve our needs is naive. It is dated. We must realize that work can be done anywhere, anytime. Technology is going to allow us to workplaces and workforces to adapt quickly, to continually change. And organizations, as I've said, who can attract the best talent, who can train them, who can develop them, who can motivate them, will win the game. In the U.S. alone, companies have invested two billion, that's two billion dollars in HR technologies in 2016. Automated administration and compliance is just one of the ways that tech serves HR. Tech is a talent advantage. I want you to think about this. That's why this matters. 
Technology is a talent advantage. Superpowered recruiting, I just talked about that. Analytics for performance management, employee engagement, etc. It's not enough at the end of the day for us to judge what an employee did. Increasingly, industry is asking us to predict what that employee will do. That's what technology is going to allow us to do. Real-time communication and education, training and development. No longer do people have to travel miles and thousands of miles to go get the technology, and I mean, get the training that they need and the development, professional development. It is now coming to them right into their living rooms, right on their PDAs. And ultimately, it's going to make work flex more possible we're going to be able to reach into parts of our global population that we never thought we could reach because we don't have to bring people into major cities to get the work done. We can go to them. And ultimately, technology is going to allow us to be a successful, in fact, successful global competitive world. So, what is tech doing to company culture? Because that's a big issue for me. Personally, in the United States, we are struggling in some significant ways with the concept of culture. We have spent so much time, and I, as a former lawyer, was one of those people who believed for a long time that you could legislate behavior, that you could get the best out of people by prescribing what they should do and what they shouldn't do, what was possible and what was not possible. And what we've learned is that has real limitations. What we've got to do is figure out how to now use technology, taking it past automation to actually impact company culture. We know the importance of a healthy culture in diverse distributed workplaces. We know the importance of workers and their concerns about automated intelligence and automation and machine learning. We know the risk of putting process before people or technology before people. We know that HR has to play a role in balancing both. HR must be committed to keeping the H, the human, in human resources. That's what we're committed to at SHRM. We're going to continue to convene and grow events like this one so that where you can gain knowledge and network with your colleagues. We're gonna produce more and more 24-7 tools and resources thanks to the technology that is enabling this work. We will be advocates, we will be thought leaders globally on these issues, and we will elevate the profession, a force, a social force that can change lives. You see, ultimately, it's people, not machines, who will build tomorrow's greatest organizations. We must never stop tapping the magic of the human element. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special job to do before I take my seat, because I'm not your keynote speaker, but your keynote speaker is really, really an impressive young man, I'm gonna call him that. We were on a flight together tonight, last night. Neither of us knew that we knew each other, partially because we were both sick. He was on one part of the plane lying down trying to recuperate. I was on the other side trying to recuperate. And we arrived here at the hotel last night and I think we're gonna be okay today, right? I wanna thank you for coming and introduce you. Let me give you a little bit about his bio because it's impressive. Give me just a second because he deserves every bit of this special recognition. God bless you. Vineet Naya. Is, Nea, is founder and chairman of the Sam Park Foundation and former CEO of HCL Technologies. He's also the author of the highly acclaimed management book, Employees First, Customers Second, turning conventional management upside down. Let me tell you, when that book was first released in 2010, it was all the buzz, more than 100,000 copies. I mean, can you imagine the level of courage to make the statement that employees are first, customers are second? Totally contrary to anyone that, anything that anyone was thinking. Vineet went on to co-found Sam Park Foundation with his wife. 
Today, the Sam Park Foundation is transforming, transforming learning outcomes of 7 million children studying in 76,000 schools. Just think about that, 7 million children. I had chills when I saw the young ladies on the stage just now. It's just an amazing thing to transform lives through our children. Forbes in its <coughs> Heroes of Philanthropy list of 2016 cited Vineet for this innovation-led large-scale social change. He was recently featured as a global thinker by Foreign Policy magazine for unplugging technology so that kids can learn. Vineet is also an acknowledged management visionary and a radical thinker. I told you about his book. He's a radical thinker who architect, architected HCLT's transformation from three quarters of a billion dollars or so in 2005 to nearly a five billion dollar company across 32, 33 countries. This radical transformation led Fortune to recognize HCL as the world's most modern management company. It led HCL's innovative management practices to be taught not only at the Harvard Business School, but at the London Business School. Vineet was also recently chosen by Fortune magazine for its first ever global executive dream team. Can you imagine? Global executive dream team. He's been described as an all-star leader that could coalesce and dominate in any industry. This is an addition to um, the conclusion that he is one of the world's top 50 business leaders. Actually, I can't believe you're able to get someone like this to come here. And I'm so honored, ladies and gentlemen, that we would have someone uh, of this stature join us today. As I wrap up, because there's so much I can say about this radical thinker, business leader, is that he's the founding member of Brookings India. He's been a juror of the Harvard Business Review's prestigious McKinsey Prize. Previously, he served as governor of ICT, member of the Global Advisory Board of Women's Leaders and Gender Parity Programs, as well as a community partner of the Forum of Young Global Leaders of the World Economic Forum. Vineet has been a mentor or co-chair of the World Economic Forum's AMC conf AMNC conference. Uh, he joined HCL in 1985 after earning his MBA from XLRI. He founded ComNet and helped it grow into a $1.4 billion dominant technology leader and in 2005 became president of HCL Technologies and served as the company's CEO until January of 2013. Vineet spends his spare time, I don't know how you have much spare time, but he spends his spare time writing on management strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, Sherm India, please join me in bringing to our stage Vineet Neher. Thank you.